Hey folks, Jim Thomas here, fitness management and consulting, and I appreciate you being here at the channel today. And for those of you that have not yet done so, you know, please hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it. And uh, if you find the information that I provide beneficial to you, you know, please hit that like button as well. Now, our topic for you today, it's 10 bad gym sales habits that you need to break right now. 10 bad habits you need to break right now. Take a look at these. Listen to this video a few times, okay? Are you doing any of these? You know, sometimes little bitty changes can get you some great big results. So let's take a look at these and, you know, ask yourself, hey, is that me? Or if you're managing somebody, hey, is this part of my team and how can I help them? So number one on our list, it's self-doubt. Okay, you know, self-doubt. Sales can be a streaky business sometimes. Sometimes you're hot, sometimes you're cold. And if this starts to get into our head a little bit, you know, it can become kind of self-fulfilling here in terms of what the end result's going to be. And in terms of self-doubt, I mean, the, the big thing that I would suggest here is continue to be a student of this. You know, continue to get education. I know many clubs and many sales folks and managers, they'll use this channel, they'll use our channel as a resource for this. And every day they'll go in and they'll, they'll, they'll uh, look at a video and they'll talk about it and say, hey, how can we implement this? So for trying to, to, um, to work against some self-doubt, you know, use the channel here as a way to do that. Make sure we're continually getting education, making sure we're associating with people people that are high achievers. Let's don't be hanging out with those naysayers because sometimes they can drive that self-doubt uh, down even further. Uh, number two, making excuses and complaining. Making excuses and complaining. You know, we're not in the excuse business. You know, we're in the solutions business. We're in the results business. You know, as it's been said many times, we can either make excuses or we can make money, but we can't do both. Okay, what we want to be constantly focused on is solutions. You know, most anybody can define kind of what's wrong. And there's always going to be something wrong. That's why you're so valuable, right? That's why we need you. That's why, you know, your employer needs you is because we need that person that can be focused on solutions. So don't find yourself complaining. Don't sign yourself making excuses. We're going to breathe life into that. It's going to become real and it's going to become a problem. Stay focused on what the solutions are. Stay focused on solving problems for folks. Uh, number three, not asking for help. You know, boy, don't wait until it's too late. I mean, I find this a lot in my business, you know, as a, as a business consultant. You know, a lot of times folks, they won't call me until the patient's on the operating table. <laughs> okay. And sometimes we can save them, sometimes not. But certainly if we'd have got to them sooner, we would have had a much, much greater chance. Okay. And if you're in sales, okay, ask for help. You know, one of the things I like to recommend is just simply the third party touch, you know, a turnover. You know, if I'm talking to somebody, I'm not getting anywhere with them and they're ready to go. And I might say, well, Mary, hey, before you leave, I'd like to introduce you to our manager. You know, she likes to meet all of our guests that come in. I know she'd be really disappointed if she didn't get a chance to meet you. I'm going to bring her over and I'm going to turn that over and she'll give it a shot. Okay. Third party touch. It's a great way to do it. Go get help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Okay. Uh, doesn't cost anything. Again, use this channel. There's lot, lots of help on this channel. You know, lots of how to's on how to get the job done here. Uh, number four, giving up too soon. Th this is one of the big ones. Uh, maybe we could put this at the top or at least close to it. They're all pretty close, right? But um, this is about follow-up. Okay, and following up with our customer. And, you know, the clubs that I watch and look at and get involved with, many of them, most of them, we don't follow up at all. Okay, zero follow up. And for those that do, maybe it's one or two or three attempts at follow up. You know, maybe a message is left, a text message is sent, an email, but there's no engagement. Okay, and that's really not the kind of follow up you need. Generally, it's, it could take up to 12 contacts. To really properly nurture this person to get them back in, okay, and by nurturing, you know, trying to maintain interest and, and maintain desire and put that person in a position where, hey, yeah, I think I do want to get involved in what you guys are doing, and so we have to do that. We're, we give up too soon, it's a killer because now you're only handling who's interested, okay. Almost anyone can do that. Okay, so let's don't give up too soon. Here's the number I can put on this based on what I see. 
if we do our follow-up properly, particularly if we're not doing it right or right correctly right now, you can improve your business anywhere from 15 to 20%. Okay. And I know when I get involved in a company, if someone said to me, Hey Jim, can you take this place over and we need to get results as quick as possible? What would you do? First thing I would do, I would do what nobody else is willing to do. And that's pick up the phone and call people. And I'm going to grab all my telephone inquiries for the last 12 months and start with the most recent one and work back. I'm going to grab all my guest registers, start with my most recent one and work back. I'm going to call all of them. That's where I'm going to start because I know that most people don't do that. Most people give up too soon. Don't do that. Okay. Um, number five, we take our time responding. We take our time responding. You know, here, here's the thing we want to understand about modern sales. Modern selling, it's about fast, quick, easy, friendly. Fast, quick, easy, friendly. Doesn't mean that it's rushed. Doesn't mean that we're skipping steps, but fast, quick, easy, friendly. Okay. And particularly when it comes to internet leads that come in and internet correspondence. Okay. Internet moves quick and moves fast. And one of the, one of the pieces of data that's important, if you get a, a, a lead that comes in through the internet, if you can respond within five minutes, that person is nine times more likely to buy from you. Don't wait to call them back in a day or two or three. That is way too slow. Get back with them quick. Speed, speed tells your customer that their problem is your problem. Okay. So don't take your time, you know, responding to people. Uh, number six, putting off prospecting. Okay. One of the bad habits you have to break right now, we put off prospecting because here's what happens. You're selling, you're selling, you're selling, you're having success. Things are going well, but you're not prospecting. You're not keeping your pipeline full. So now all of a sudden when that pipeline has gone dry, now it's empty. doesn't matter how good of a salesperson you are if there's no one in that chair to talk to. And so what you have to do is make sure you are prospecting every single day. You are moving people through and you're building your pipeline every single day. I mean, point of sale referrals, floor referrals, you know, former members, you know, corporate sales, you know, working your, your, your email database. There's a lot of things in there and we want to do these things every single day. I mean, I like to see in general, Hey, you as a one individual salesperson, you know, be bringing in about nine or 10 new leads a day. That'd be a good number to start with. And then everything else you have, now you keep that pipeline full. The chair, you have to have people in the chair is the bottom line. Uh, number seven, lack of planning. Okay. Here's what we know. You can't wing it. You can't wing it. And if we don't plan, if we don't have a plan of action, you really become a victim of circumstance. I mean, you come in every day and you're just going to start fending off what's coming to you and there'll be plenty of it good and bad. Okay. If you have a plan of action, you know, where's our starting point? What's our goals, tangible and intangible. What's the plan for each, you know, what are potential roadblocks and setbacks? What's that solution? You know, what's plan B. Okay. And you know, we start to put those plans in place. Now we work our plan every single day, have a plan. Okay. Know what your goal is. What is your plan to reach it? Plans and goals are different things. What's our goal? What's our plan to reach it? And then what's our, uh, you know, potential roadblocks and setbacks. And if that happens, what's that plan? Okay. So make sure there's plenty of plans here. Um, number eight, winging it. Winging it in sales. You know, I see this all the time. You know, we don't really have a process that we follow. Here's how we handle a phone inquiry. Here's our sales process. Here's our second sale process. You know, don't just wing it. It shouldn't be, oh yeah, here's how I do it. Here's how I do it. Because if we just wing it and now you fall into a slump, you don't necessarily know where to go to fix it. Okay. Whereas if you're following a true process, you can just, you know, just check off the, the line items. Oh, look, I'm missing this. I'm rushing through this step right here. That's why I'm falling into a slump. Don't find yourself winging it. Have a management process, have a sales process uh, in place. Uh, number nine, using the same presentation for everyone. Now you can have your sa the same footprint. Okay. But adjust 
the, the, the tour and the presentation to the person you're talking to. If you're talking to someone who's young and fit and they're competing and they want to get better and maybe they're single and no kids, that's a whole lot different than someone who's got two or three kids or you know both spouses are working, they want to lose 20 pounds, and they're trying to get off medication. That's a different conversation that you have. So make sure that presentation adjusts to who you're talking to. Now the footprint of how you walk through the facility, that part can stay the same, but make Make sure this is all unique to that person because ultimately, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to solve problems for that person and make sure we know how to do that. And then number 10, you know, always trying to have the answer. We think we always have to have the answer. You do not always have the, ha uh, have the answer. Okay, Mary, that's a great question. Let me find out the answer to that for you. That's great. You know, I'd rather you do that than give incorrect information. Okay, I'd rather you do that than tell them something that's not quite right, or maybe you're kind of guessing at it. Mary, before I guess at that, let me get you the correct answer. Okay, so don't feel like you always have to have uh, the answer for everybody. Okay, so 10 bad gym sales habits you want to break right now. Take a look at those. Listen to this video uh, over a few times. Which ones are you doing? If you're managing a team, you know, which ones are they doing? You know, we start to adjust some of these things. We can have some, uh, we can have some real success. You know, what's the, what's the old uh, Einstein definition of insanity? You know, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Well, if our sales team is struggling, if you're struggling and we're just doing the same thing every day, take a look at these. You might find that's where the answer sits for you. So folks, my name is Jim Thomas. My company is Fitness Management and, Con and Consulting. You want to learn more about my company, please check the links below for a number of different opportunities and avenues of, and ways that you can grow your business. And if you find the information that I provide here uh, beneficial to you, please hit that like button. We we'll look forward to chatting with you real soon.